in the shadow of violent past, was a theatricalized Truth and Reconciliation Committee of almost a fantasized version of what such a process would look like and feel like after a political agreement between the Israelis and the Palestinians, including the end of the Israeli occupation. And it was initiated by a joint Jewish-Arab theater group um, that's housed in the, it's called the Old City of Jaffa, right next to Tel Aviv, called the Arab Hebrew Theater, and the human rights organization called the Public Committee Against Torture in Israel. It's brought together real-life characters. Let me be clear, real-life people playing themselves, in fact, being themselves. Palestinians who had been stopped at checkpoints. One Palestinian woman who lost her child because she couldn't get through a checkpoint of the Israel Defense Force. Bereaved Palestinian and Israeli parents alongside Jewish and Arab actors who were playing other roles based on testimonies that the human rights organization, the, the, the Committee Against Torture, had gathered and that the theater artist had adapted. So in essence, they were taking either historical events and or current events and trying to reassess them. Now, as I mentioned before, documentary theater is part of political theater. What's political theater? Political theater is when theater artists say, we want to take sides. No purporting at all to being objective. We're taking sides. We want to shape political consciousness. We want to shape historical memory in some way. We want to take on the normative, historiographical understanding of this recent event, of this distant event, or actually perhaps an event that we're living right now. There's often, not always, an element in political theater of public protest. There's a clear agenda, as I mentioned, and there's a feeling amongst documentary theater artists that they're bringing a critique of what they perceive, at least, to be a concealment of truth, the falsification of truth, of all sorts of lies and deception. It really prompted the theater artist to say, know what's been going on. This is not in another country. This is happening here. This is a different kind of peace-building theater which has a very explicit and unabashed political agenda. And I think it's important to understand that the lack of patience that many Jews and Arabs have for different kinds of peace-building attempts often bring about theater artists to maybe, in this, like in this case, say, you know what? Let's forfeit the subtlety, the sophistication. Let's maybe even make some compromises on the aesthetics. We have a mission. And our mission is to use our art to share these voices and to try to make some sort of concrete social and political change. Usually one of the explicit goals is to get the audience engaged, to challenge the audience. Um, you can put the audience in the role of being the accuser, of being the accused, or in a bunch of different roles. And that's important. Someone's choosing to come to a theater production, and they're already they're finding themselves in a role. We tend to think um, in the, in the peace-making and coexistence world that, and generally in the group process world, that we have to invite conflict and not try to avoid it. And we have to work creatively with conflict. And I think that notion is very much built into theater because theater is, uh, is by definition a conflictual process. Now, what was this play? This, this was an unbelievable production because it was taking real life victims and perpetrators they brought these characters in conflict with each other. The one that I want to point on was, was a soldier who appeared for his whole role with a paper bag over his head. Okay, the actor's name was Alona Butbul. Alona Butbul, a very well-known Israeli stage and film actor, a Jewish-Israeli actor, with a paper bag over his head, acting, depicting an Israeli soldier in the Israeli Defense Force who's telling the stories of human rights abuses that he's been involved with. After a very extensive testimony, the actor takes off the paper bag and continues to answer the questions. And that moment is one of the most powerful theatrical moments that I can remember. When Alodo Abulbul, who himself was a soldier, 
and a part of the Israeli Defense Force uh, occupation of the Palestinian territories, is exposing his vulnerability as both a character, as an actor, and somehow trying to come to grips with feelings of shame and of guilt. And what was interesting in the whole dynamic between the, the commissioners and between this Alona Bupo character is that they were engaging him not only to tell the story, but they were also engaging him to apologize. And so what was going on in Alona Bupo? What was going on for the audience? It was very unclear. This use of theater for sh getting stories out there, for, for sharing voices that are not heard, um, is supposed to discomfort the audiences. And that's its role. It's not there to make people feel good. It's not there necessarily to disturb, per se. It's there, though, to be a fair and honest broker of these stories and of these voices. The theater reenacted things that had just happened or envisioned things that they thought Both. they wanted to happen? Reenacted human rights abuses from 94 to 96, three or four years before, five years ago. But the process of calling the people to the testimony, like it had been done in South Africa and other countries, that had never happened. How would the two societies come to grips with each other? How would they try to actually move into some sort of mindset and potential actual stage of reconciliation. No one is talking about a Truth and Reconciliation Committee now. No one was talking about it then, but the theater was saying, let's get people to think about that. It was both reimagining what had been and imagining this process in and of itself. How would that feel? For me, it's, 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 it's a powerful thought. What would it feel like for Israel and Palestine to have a Truth and Reconciliation Committee between the two societies? That would be something. That would be really, really something. And we're so far away from that. People working together, people in clear conflict working together, seeing that on stage, um, enabling things to be said and shown that if they were discussed in a regular public forum and not in the theater, would not only be legitimized, might even be outlawed. Having a Palestinian flag on stage in the Truth and Reconciliation Committee was not trivial. And Arab school principals in Israel are not allowed to have Palestinian flags up in their schools. It comes from a very, very rich concept, context of theater artists, of political theater artists, saying, you know what? Documentary theater is a very, very effective tool to get the word out, to make people think, to make people question, to make people perhaps empathize, to let people even know of the stories the interface between creating facts on the ground that are undebatable. Here, Jews and Arabs are working together, are presenting high quality theater that's challenging, that's engaging, that's almost a crystal ball of what relations might be. That's extremely compelling. And those are facts on the ground. And those facts on the ground can also create facts in the head. In other words, shape perceptions of the other and of oneself. And that is the true power of theater.